Thank, thank you, Nalisa. And I, I have to admit that I did not prepare this talk. I've reviewed it and I'm comfortable with it. Uh, but we have to acknowledge that Bill Sanborn uh, put this evidence together. Now, the purpose of my presentation was to evaluate the efficacy and safety of vetalizumab compared to placebo or an active comparator for the induction and maintenance of Crohn's disease. And for some reason, when Bill put this together, he did not uh, utilize the same network analysis uh, that you utilized. Uh, this is based on PubMed and Medline and Cochrane's central library references up to the spring of this year, randomized controlled trials that evaluated the efficacy and safety of veto compared to placebo for Crohn's disease were included. Again, no network uh, analysis. Data was extracted and the assessment of methodologic quality was performed similar to what Dr. Singh mentioned. Um, methodologic quality was assessed using the Cochrane tool and the overall quality of evidence supporting the outcomes uh, utilized grades. So a somewhat different uh, presentation than you heard from um, Sid regarding the TNF inhibitors. The mechanism of action uh, for the anti-integrins and vetalizumab in general is preventing the inflammatory cells from getting out of the bloodstream into the tissue or out of the lymphocytes into the bloodstream into the tissue in the setting of the S1P1 uh, inhibitors that we heard a little bit about yesterday. Although I will tell you that the dosing of vetalizumab was determined somewhat differently than the dosing of the TNF inhibitors. The dosing of vetalizumab was determined based on the receptor saturation of the integrins with the alpha-4 beta-7 target. So the dosing was determined on patients, the, the dose that was sufficient to saturate the receptors rather than inhibition of TNF. Um, that's actually being somewhat challenged now as well by Brian and others by virtue of the fact that there is a exposure response relationship with um, healing with um, vetalizumab as well. And that exposure response doesn't really uh, correlate well with this concept of receptor saturation. So there may be other aspects of the mechanism uh, that remain to be determined. Uh, but this seems to be, you're going to see additional uh, targets, as Brian alluded to yesterday, looking at targets for beta-7 integrin, targeting MADCAM, and uh, lymphocyte trapping, lymphocyte uh, trapping in lymph nodes with some of the oral S1P1 inhibitors. The outcomes that we looked at, uh, that Bill looked at in the vetalizumab trial, were induction of clinical remission and clinical relapse. Secondary outcomes were induction or maintenance of response, adverse events, serious adverse events, and withdrawal due to adverse events. So this is much more of a, a standard Cochrane analysis. There were dichotomous outcomes, pooled risk uh, ratios, and continuous outcomes were determined by mean differences and 95% confidence intervals. You can see via the flow chart that were a number of records, over 400 records, uh, that were uh, distilled into four studies that are essentially going to be reported here. The four studies included uh, about 1,800 patients. Uh, Brian and Bill Sanborn uh, were the primary authors. All studies were judged to be at low risk of bias. Three studies uh, investigated intravenous vetalizumab, and one study um, uh, from a number of years ago looked at another a compound that was an orally administered alpha-4 beta-7 integrin antibody. As far as clinical remission, it was assessed at six to eight weeks, um, again, relatively early for this mechanism of action, clinical response at 52 weeks, and um, also a clinical response at six to eight weeks. Understand that these were not all the primary outcomes of the study, because the primary outcome uh, in the uh, phase three studies of vetalizumab, I believe, was clinical, uh, was maintenance of remission at the end of 52 weeks, if I'm not mistaken, Brian. Um, but 
these were the outcomes that were utilized for this analysis. As far as failure, and, and these analyses are somewhat counterintuitive because we're not looking at the proportion of patients who entered remission, we're looking at the proportion of patients who didn't enter remission. And um, the failure was improved. Less patients on vetalizumab failed to get in remission. That's why I hate these kind of criteria. It's so counterintuitive. Tell us what we really want to know here. So more patients got remissions. The relapse rate was actually uh, lower with vetalizumab compared to placebo. And again, in these trials, similar to the TNF trials, but also different, were patients who had failed conventional agents, but with vetalizumab, they may have also failed TNF agents, which were different from some of the primary analyses that Sid uh, discussed with TNF agents. Again, saying it the opposite of this slide, more patients had a clinical response in six to eight weeks with vetalizumab compared to placebo. As far as a clinical remission at six to eight weeks, again, according to the meta-analysis, more patients did achieve clinical remission with vetalizumab uh, than they did with a placebo. And similarly, more patients also achieved a clinical response within the first six to eight weeks. So there's been a lot of debate and discussion about rapidity of response. Brian yesterday actually showed data uh, at responses within uh, three weeks in the setting at least of ulcerative colitis uh, with vetalizumab. So in Crohn's disease, we are seeing responses relatively uh, short term, not in a comparative analysis uh, with other agents, however. As far as uh, adverse events, Again, the great analysis was um, high with this. Um, for uh, any adverse event within the first six to eight weeks, and of course, eight weeks is not the optimal time to look at uh, potential side effects. Uh, relatively short-term exposure to exposed side effects over time. Uh, we'll see data more at 52 weeks at the bottom, which uh, also demonstrated um, a good consistency and a very favorable uh, profile. So in conclusion, vetalizumab was significantly more effective than placebo for induction of clinical remission within the first six to eight weeks. Uh, was also significantly more effective than placebo for induction of clinical response. The relapse rates were less with vetalizumab than placebo. And um, there were no differences between side effects, and this is in contrast to what Sid said, where he considered vetalizumab to have the same number of side effects as the TNF inhibitors, uh, but in the clinical trials, that was not the case.